What's going on, everybody? I'm Primal Liquid, and we are starting from the very beginning, everybody. We're going to be doing a 100% playthrough for the game that single-handedly saved Square back in uh, the 1980s. So, if you don't know, we are playing Final Fantasy 1. And the reason I said it saved Square is, uh, if you don't know, uh, back way before they merged with uh, Enix and that, back when they were known as Squaresoft, they were actually originally about to go bankrupt, but they wanted to make one final game. And, uh, well, they wanted to make it a fantasy style, and that's where the name Final Fantasy comes from. So, we're going to be tackling the very first game in the series. Not only that, though, I'm going to be doing this as, uh, as a little marathon, you know? We're going to do FF1, then 2, then 3, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the things I do just want to, uh, to mention is we are playing the PSP version of the game. You know, we're not doing that... Um, that horrible pixel looking remake thing they've put on Steam because that's only the original NES version which means it's missing content whereas the PSP version it does have the uh, the Souls of Rebirth content and all of that good stuff so yeah that's why uh, that's why we're doing that of course we are going to be choosing English as the language now one of the things I just want to mention like because of the age of Final Fantasy 1 I, I imagine there's actually quite a few people that haven't played it so what I'm going to do really quickly is I'll just go over the uh, the six different classes and give you a little bit of a lowdown on them so to start off with we have the warrior now the warrior is is a pretty good unit he has a good attack and good defense you can upgrade the warrior later on down the line into a paladin which is basically the same as the warrior only he can use more armor like you know more heavy armor and things like that he'll also gain access to some low level white magic now the warrior is arguably the best class in final fantasy one so i would strongly suggest you have one of them then we have the Thief. Now, the Thief is, he's a good beginner friendly class because he does have really good speed and he also has really good evasion as well. So that's why he's good for a beginner because, you know, chances are enemies won't really be attacking him a lot. The only downside is his attack is unfortunately not that good. Likewise, magic is, again, not that good. You can upgrade the Thief into a ninja later on in the game though. And the ninja is pretty much the same thing, only he does gain access to some black magic as well then we have the monk now the monk is actually really 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 strong like in terms of attack power it is the strongest class in the game however he cannot use magic at all not only that it's actually better to play the monk with no weapon equipped and just use his bare fists for more damage the monk will eventually turn into a master but again, it's just a, a slightly stronger version of the monk. You know, you still can't use magic or anything like that. Now, this one, even though he is incredibly strong, he's good for a first time playthrough if you want damage. Other than that, though, he's largely useless. Now, the red mage is pretty much the same as a black and white mage. What I mean by that is he actually gains the, well, he has the ability to learn all white magic and all black magic. However, you are limited in Final Fantasy 1 to the amount of magic you can learn. So, for example, spells are set apart by level. You have level 1 spells, level 2 spells, and level 3 spells, and so on and so forth. Now, you can only learn three spells for each level. This is the same for Red Mage, White Mage, and Black Mage. You can only learn three spells for each level. However, there are four spells for each level for each element. So what I mean by that is there is four level one spells for white magic, and there is four level one spells for black magic, which gives you a grand total of eight spells. Now, the red mage can only choose three of them per level. So you can mix and match what you want on the red mage, and it does have a decent physical attack. It is a pretty good character, but other than that, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a little iffy, to be honest. It is a little iffy. Now, it does have worse MP and intelligence than a black and white mage, but it does actually have more HP, attack, and defense. And of course, they do get stronger as you level up. Now, as you uh, well, as you get later in the game, the red mage can turn into a red wizard, which is pretty much just a stronger version of the red mage. 
Not really recommended for a first time playthrough though. Instead, I would suggest going for the White Mage and the Black Mage. And the reason for that is they specialize in their own elements. So for example, as I mentioned, you only have four spells per level. A white Mage, you can just stick all, well, you can stick three level one spells on it, you know, and be done. Because typically there are only really two or three good spells per level anyway. So that's why I would recommend you actually take a White Mage and a Black Mage. The White Mage is pretty much the best support character, and the Black Mage just shits out elemental damage. Pretty much enough said with them too. Of course, though, later on in the game, you can turn them into a Black Wizard and a White Wizard, respectively. Now, it has been a really, really long time since I've played this game. So, I'm going to be going with a warrior, a white mage, and a black mage. And, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with a thief. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to go with a thief. So, now, let's, uh, let's make some names. You know what? For the warrior, we'll just call him Primal. It's like, look guys, we, we have to name a character after ourselves, okay? We have to do it, for sure. So, we'll go Primal. And then, let's see, for the, uh, for the thief... Uh, hmm, who should, who should we call the thief? Uh, you know what, let's go, let's go Moop, let's go Moop. In honor of, uh, one of our big old stream supporters, Moopert. So, oh, there's not going to be enough space, is the No, there's not going to be enough space, unfortunately. So, we'll just go Moop, we'll go Moop for Moopert. So, we'll have Moop as our thief, soon to be Ninja. Uh, white Mage, you know what? We'll, we'll go Withered. We'll go Withered. Like, the White Mage is going to keep us alive. And Withered supports me a hell of a lot. So, we'll uh, we'll name him Withered as well. Uh, let's see. Well, looks like he's now called Wither. Yep, we'll, we'll go with Wither. Uh, so, by the way, so, sorry, uh, nude, but uh, the White Mage is kind of female in this game. I, I hope you don't mind. Um, and for Black Mage, uh, you know what? Let's... Uh, Let's give a little shout out to uh, one of my Discord and stream mods, Merc. So we'll go, uh, we'll go with Merc for the Black Mage. It's like we got it. We got to be nice to all these lovely, lovely people that help support me, right? So we have Merc, and we're done with the name. So we got Primal, Moop, Withered, and Merc. Let's go. Let's start the game with this party. Yes, let's do it, man. Let's do it. I tell you what though guys, it has been a long, long, long time since I've played Final Fantasy 1. We gotta kill Chaos guys, okay? We have to kill Chaos. It's like, I'm gonna, you know what, I might just have to say Chaos so many times this playthrough. Just, uh, just for memes of Stranger of Paradise, you know? It's like, this is, uh, this is pretty much where that game originated. It's like a spin-off of the FF1 storyline, pretty much. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be killing Chaos and Garland and then killing Chaos some more because I don't know, I guess I guess it's fun, you know. I guess it's fun. Oh man. I tell you what though, it's like I do love the PSP version of this game. It just looks so clean, you know? It looks so so clean. Well, especially compared to the NES version anyway. It's like I know some people prefer like the um the NES, but I don't know, like, it's not really, it's not really for me, to be honest, like, I actually do much prefer the PSP version for FF1, and, I mean, obviously, they're doing the, uh, they're doing the Pixel remaster for Steam, but, eh, eh, like, I don't know, the text looks absolutely disgusting, so we're gonna need a mod for that, um, but then, also, it's missing the Dawn of Soul, the DLC. Uh, it's missing the Dawn of Soul extra content, so we're not going to bother with that. Okay, so as soon as the game starts, what we're actually meant to do is we're actually meant to go into the uh, into the town there. I'm not going to do that straight off the bat, and the reason for that is I actually want some gold. Be well, I say gold. I want some gill, and the main reason that I want gill is we're going to buy some magic once we actually go into the city. So right now we're just gonna we're gonna mass murder some goblins. Also, one of the things I will say is I am actually playing this on emulator. Don't worry, I still have my PSP. I still own the game. You know, there's no there's no law breaking going on or anything like that. So I will be using a little bit of a speed up here. Uh, what I will say though is I am going to turn dash on and cursor. I'm going to put to memory. Message speed is going to be set to fast, and that's pretty much all. Also, one of the things that I will uh, throw out there is. You can abuse a glitch in the PSP version. I don't know if it works on the um, 
uh, the NES version of Final Fantasy 1, and I don't know if it's going to work on the Pixel version either, you know, the Pixel Remaster for Steam, but in order to do this glitch, what you need to do is go to configuration, put your cursor to memory, and then what you would do is, let's just unequip the knife for now on uh, my warrior, and then on my thief, I'm going to highlight the uh, the helm slot. So now when I press left and right on my uh, my triggers, as you can see right now, the f uh, the warrior is still on the weapon and the thief is still on the helmet. Now when I go to equip that knife and when I go to equip the helmet, I obviously can't do anything. However, in Final Fantasy 1, weapons and armor actually all share the same ID code. The only thing that changes is the weapon and armor slot. So what this means is a weapon with an ID code of 1 will actually have an armor correspondent with another ID code of 1, okay? So if I go to equip the knife, as you can see right there, it's a knife. But if I press R and X at the same time, what's going to happen is it's going to select the weapon, but it's going to give me the selection in the thief's helmet slot. So if I just do this now, as you can see right now, I can equip the leather armor to Moop's helmet. Now, obviously, this is a... Uh, this is a glitch. You know, you're not you're, you're not meant to be able to equip armor to a helmet, but you can this way. Not only that, there is something else as well. So right now, if I unequip the uh, the staff from my white mage, and then we do the exact same thing where I highlight the helmet. Uh, oops, there we go. So as you can see right now, I can get a chainmail right there. Chainmail is really really strong. Obviously, I can buy it in the town, but it's one of the things you can uh, you can do. You know. And of course, it also works the other way as well. So if I actually just take off the cloth right there, so right now I'm highlighting the armor for my white mage and I'm highlighting the weapon for my black mage. So if I do that, I can now get nunchucks on my black mage, which is uh, quite strong, you know, it's quite strong. This is one of the ways you can actually get gear on classes that can't actually equip said gear. Um, but it's also a way to get really, really strong gear really, really early. Now, I'm not really going to abuse that because, I mean, it's, it's ridiculously strong, okay? It is absolutely insanely ridiculously strong, so that's why I'm not going to do that. Also, yes, I am going to be speeding up these uh, these battles a little bit, just because I know for, like, Final Fantasy 1 in general is a game that is really, really short. So, you know, I mean, the battles, eh. Like, they're just going to drag out a little bit, so we don't really need to worry about them. Especially with such an early game grind for a little bit of gold. Uh, gil. So as you can see, 30 gil right there, and I leveled up. Nice. So yeah, this is... Um, Final Fantasy 1 is different to Final Fantasy 2 because of the fact you actually have proper levels in this game. You have proper levels, you have proper stats, and things like that. So we will be uh, we will be leveling up as well, right? How much gil do I have? 578. It's not a lot, but you know what? We'll we'll do it. We'll do it. So now that I've gone in the city, I'm completely locked out. Also, one of the things that is different in Final Fantasy 1 compared to later games, if you have a character that dies, you will not revive when using the inn, okay? The inn will only heal your HP and your MP. If you have a character that dies, what you need to do is you need to go to a church. So right now, there are none in need of my services to not lose Heartbrave Warriors. So if I had a character that is dead, I would need to speak to this person right here to revive them for me, and it does cost gil. Now, the inn and the church, their gil costs will actually increase depending on the village that you are. Goddamn loud bikes, man. But yeah, so what this does is basically, you know, the earlier you are on the game, the cheaper things are for, like, restoring he uh, health and that. The later you are in the game, um, the more expensive things are. Obviously, I'm a little bit weakened, so I'm going to go heal for 30 gil, which is the cheapest healing that you will ever get in this game. So do keep in mind to, uh, you know, it's like if you're going to pass, if you're going past a low level area, it's definitely worthwhile healing in, you know, a low level areas in rather than waiting until a high level one, basically. So now let's look at how we actually get magic in Final Fantasy 1. So we've got a weapon shop there and we've also got an armor shop next to it. You can tell that by the little icon above the building, swords and shield. You know, swords are obviously weapons, shields are obviously armor. But then right here, we have magic as well. So the little black one is obviously black magic, and the white one is for white magic. So now I'm just going to go in. In fact, I should probably check the cost. 50 gil, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So 
When it comes to magic for level 1, we have Cure, Deer, Protect, and Blink. Now, this is... It's a little iffy on what you want to get here. And the reason I say that is... They each do different things, basically. So, straight off the bat, we obviously want Cure. You know, like, Cure is our basic healing magic. It's going to come in very, very handy throughout. Uh, we do have Deer, which deals damage to all undead foes. But it's not really needed. And there is a better version of that later. So, I'm not actually going to get that. There is Protect, and there is Blink as well. Now, Blink raises Caster's Evasion. And Protect obviously raises one ally's defense. These are pretty good, um, you know, buff spells, especially Blink. Blink later on will actually become incredibly, incredibly strong. So what I'm going to do is, just for level 1 white magic, I'm going to get Cure, Protect, and Blink. Now, as you can see right now there, I have all three white magics learned. So I can't actually learn Deer even if I wanted to. However, you can go to magic on the white mage and you can actually delete a magic if you wanted to. So all you have to do right here is discard and you can actually discard a magic if you want to replace it with something else. Not really recommended to be honest. Like 9 times out of 10 the magic you want is pretty much going to be set in stone because of what's better and what's worse. So... Let's talk about black magic. So for black magic, I'm obviously going to get the uh, two elemental spells, fire and thunder, just so I can start taking advantage of enemy weaknesses. So now for the last two, we have sleep and focus. Now focus lowers one foe's evasion. Eh, not really that like important to be honest like accuracy isn't really going to be a big issue for me so i'm going to actually get sleep here and the reason for that is it puts all foes to sleep which is going to be really really good crowd control so that's why i'm going with that instead so we've got all our magic now so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the shop shall we now one of the things you can do here is if you buy a hammer this is, I'm going to do this once just for a little bit of um, uh, gill, but basically, you know that glitch I was telling you about earlier? Well, if you do it with the hammer, you can get knight's armor. Now, knight's armor, it's in, it is in—it is a good defensive armor. Um, you won't be replacing that until, you know, like I'd say about a third to half of the way through the game. So it is incredibly, incredibly strong, especially if you glitch three of them out and stick it on the helmet. Um, on the armor and on the gloves, you know It's like as you can see right there 102 defense So it is incredibly incredibly strong for that But I'm not gonna use it because that would just be way 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 too cheap What I am gonna do though is I'm gonna sell those three knight armors just for 54,000 gil This way I don't need to grind as much early on, you know now, some people are obviously going to call me out for that, saying, Oh, you dirty cheater, what are you, do what are you doing? You know, what, what, what is this? Um, guys, it, it's not that big of a deal, seriously. Like, getting that much gill is actually kind of easy, to be honest. Um, it's just a little bit of, uh, it's just a little bit of a grind, you know? But if I did that anyway, it would make me way too strong. Plus, I'm not even going to be spending that gill for quite a while anyway. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to buy, uh, you know, a few of everything just to uh, fully equip me. So, right now, I'm just going to use Optimal just to uh, speed things up and things like that. Mainly due to the fact, uh, Optimal, at this point of the game, it will basically equip the gear with the highest uh, stat, pretty much. So, the highest stat gear will be equipped. For right now, that is perfectly fine, just because of the fact that um, Optimal doesn't take special effects into account so things like the blood sword it wouldn't take into account the hp drain ability of that or anything like that but i don't have any equipment with special effects right now so that's why i'm just relying on that for now okay so the main reason i did that uh, that little guild trick right there is just for the fact i want to buy some healing items just as a uh, a precaution essentially so I'm just going to buy 30 of everything. Again, not really needed, to be honest. Like, you could probably buy a few potions um, and, you know, just call it a day at a few potions and a couple of antidotes coming up. There are some enemies that will po uh, be able to poison you, um, but we're not going to worry about that for now. 
Okay, so there's actually nothing else we can do in this town for now. So we're going to go ahead and speak to this guard who, uh, well, he basically lets us know that the king is searching for the warriors of light. And that is us. We have the, uh, the magical crystals. We were chosen by them. So we are the legendary four heroes that were prophesied. Welcome, travelers. I'm told you carry crystals. Is this true? Yeah, I found them out in a ditch. You know, it's like I've... Uh, I'm, I'm a jeweler. I, I sell gems, okay? It's just as Lucahan's prophecy foretold. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. Your Majesty, we cannot be certain that these are the warriors foretold by the prophecy. Yeah, like imagine, you know, imagine finding a couple of people with some gems and just assuming they're like heroes of the world, you know? Could you imagine how simple the world will be if like everyone was like that? Yet they stand before us with the crystals. I cannot dismiss this as mere coincidence. Crystal bearers, there is a task I would ask of you. Will you not rescue my daughter, Sarah? Uh, Garland, a knight once in his majesty's service has abducted Princess Sarah. So, uh, you know, we're... Uh, I think we all know who Garland is. Uh, I ask for your aid in the name of his majesty, the King of Cornalia. Uh, Garland has taken refuge in the Chaos Shrine, which lies to our north. We've got to kill Chaos, guys. We've got to kill Chaos, okay? Chaos, Chaos, Chaos! Of course, we did attempt to save the princess ourselves, but Garland is the finest swordsman in the kingdom. We have none who can match him. I'll tell you what, if you guys have none who, like, if you don't have an army that can match one knight, you're a pretty bad kingdom, to be honest. Uh, I have heard that you wish to journey to the continent to our north. The bridge leading north was lost long ago, making passage impossible. If you can rescue Sarah, I will give you the bridge, I will have the bridge rebuilt as a sign of my gratitude. English is hard, okay, guys? Go now, warriors of light, and do not fail me! I will, I will try, your majesty. Can I, can I have some money, though? Like, can I have some money, maybe some weapons and equipment? I tell you, man, like, he wants me to save his daughter and he doesn't even give me anything. It's like, I, I tell you, dude, I tell you. So if you want to, you can actually, like, walk around the castle here. Uh, but there's literally, like, nothing. You, you, there's nothing to get here, like, at all. So it's pretty much better to just uh, leave, you know? And with that, it is now time to go rescue the king's daughter. So, there are going to be a few, uh, you know, a few random battles. It doesn't really matter though, you know, we bought some gear, we're pretty strong. So, again, it's, you know, it, it doesn't matter, basically. Now, as you can see on the right there, well, as you could have seen on the right, just before I got into this battle, uh, there was a destroyed bridge there. That's the bridge that we need to fix. So, right now, uh, we can set up uh, for the... Whoops, wrong button. Hmm, can you not actually target all? Huh. I thought you could target them all, but I guess not. Oh, well. So, right now, I'm just going to put them all to sleep, you know, just so that, uh, well, we'll end up being a little bit safe, you know? Same that, I mean, I kind of one-shot them all anyway, so I guess I didn't really need to do that. Yeah, so now we're, we're completely safe, but it doesn't matter anyway, because we're just going to murder everybody. Now, one of the good things, actually, about um, uh, Final Fantasy 1 is... You can actually throw items with any class. Doesn't matter what class you're controlling or anything like that, you can still throw items for pretty decent damage. So yeah, there's the bridge. We can't do anything with that there now because it's destroyed. So we have to go the only way we can, which is top left. Uh, you know what, let's use the hammer and the staff and let's show these off, shall we? Oops, I did not mean to defend there. Uh, yeah, we'll use another one, sure, why not? So, as you can see, no effect right there, no effect, and the stuff is going to be no effect as well. The main reason for that is, it's because the equipment in general does not have a special effect on it. So there are going to be items later that, uh, well, it's mainly going to be staffs, but they will effectively act the same as a magic spell. And that's actually a really, really broken thing in this game. It's like most speedrunners will actually abuse things like that. Some of the items when used like that are incredibly, incredibly strong. Plus you can get items super early which are majorly broken for that part of the game. Especially if you go ahead and use the, um, the item glitch, like the equipment glitch that I showed off earlier. Very, 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 very broken, okay? 
But again, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be using that. So we're just gonna we're kinda carry on. Oh yeah, this is the Earth Gift Shrine. So what this is is essentially this how should I put it? So this is part of the Dawn of Souls. Uh, which is like the uh, the special area that was only added in the Game Boy Advance version of the game and the PSP version of the game. It's also not in the Pixel Remaster version on Steam for some godforsaken reason. Uh, because apparently I guess Square just likes giving us inferior products, you know? It's like it wouldn't have been too hard for them to include that. Especially since the PSP version is still kind of Pixel related, you know? But uh, I guess uh, I guess they didn't want to. But it, it is what it is. So we're not going to be doing anything for that for a long, long time. Before I go into the Earth Shrine, though, I am actually going to... Uh, Earth Shrine? Before I go into the Chaos Shrine, I am actually going to uh, just make a save point, you know, a little bit of safety. So in the Chaos Shrine, there are quite a few new enemies and there are also a few items to grab. Now, unfortunately, my notes are absolutely shockingly bad for FF1. Look, guys, it's been a long, long time, okay? Um, oh, wow, my, uh, my Merc is nearly dead. Merc's nearly dead, man. I, I can't let Merc die. He does so much for me. I can't let him die. But yeah, so um, as you know from my over like 100% uh, walkthroughs and things like that, one of the things I do is I don't use a, like, I don't use a walkthrough of myself or anything like that. Um, I do it all off of my own personal notes, which, you know, I have made from reading walkthroughs way back in the past and just like, um, you know, like general playing myself and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but yeah, so things might get a little weird because my notes are trash for these older games. It's like, uh, I don't actually have in my notes where items are. I just have what items are here, basically. Now, if I'm not mistaken for the Earth Shrine, though, there's an item in each corner. Because there is a Lever Cap, there's a Ruin Blade, and there's a Wear Buster chest. So, we're just going to go ahead and get them now. You know what, though? I'm going to put my... Uh, uh, I can't actually put them in the back row. I forgot there is no back row on FF1. Damn. Well, it's it's all right. You know, it's all right. I am going to try and keep them healthy, though, with potions for now. Uh, so we've got a potion. Oh, I didn't even have that on my uh, my list. Okay, and a tent. Did not have that on my list either. You know what? I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to see if I missed any bits of paper for my list. Uh, but no, I do... Know, I do... Like, I do remember from the past that there is an item in each corner of the... Uh, the shrine. We don't have to, like, there's no invisible walls or anything like that in this shrine. They're all gonna be later. So the door has been bound by the mystic key. Um, we don't get that yet. That's, like, way later. Because we will have to come back to this shrine uh, later on in the game as well. So for now, let's go ahead and check out the uh, the last room. Oh, wait, no, that's mystic key as well. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. We'll, uh, we'll come back for that later. Okay, so let's just uh, continue on then, I guess. I've just got to be careful, though, about my health, because there will be a boss battle in here. And, you know what, I'm actually going to get some levels just while running around everywhere. Mainly due to the fact, you know, I want to just be careful, make sure I got everything and things like that. But also, I do want a couple of levels in here, basically. I will actually mention as well, for anybody curious, um, when it comes to random battles in Final Fantasy 1, there is a lot. Okay, there is a huge amount of random battles. It makes later games look like... Uh, I mean, it makes later games look like you just don't get any at all. Like, there is a lot of random battles. So right now, we are level 5. Um, that's more than high enough for the boss. So we're just going to go on ahead. So here is Garland and the lovely, lovely princess. So let's go ahead and say hello. The king will have no choice but to exchange the kingdom for his daughter's life. Cornelia will be mine. No, she won't, buddy. No, she won't. Who's there? Hmm, the king's lapdogs. Do you have any idea who you're messing with? You really think you have what it takes to cross swords with me? Very well. I, Garland, will knock you all down. Keep dreaming, buddy. Keep dreaming. Okay, so let's give some information on Garland first and foremost. So, Garland gives 130 EXP upon being defeated. He gives 250 gil. 
he will drop a broadsword and his stats are actually kind of low. He's not weak to anything and he doesn't resist anything either. He has 212 HP and I think he has about 15 attack. So there's not too much in terms of worry, you know, like level 5 is going to be, it's going to be more than enough. Now, one of the things you can actually do if you really, really want to is in order to protect your healer a little bit, you can cast Blink here. Um, but again, it's really, it's really not needed, you know. The only reason I do it is just that added little protection. It's just something I always did as a kid and, you know, it never... I don't know, like, I never lost the habit of doing it, you know? Like, Blink is really, really good for protection. So that's why I still do it, even today. Other than that, though, we're just gonna, we're just gonna attack and use magic. You know, it's like, Garland is... He's like a tutorial boss, you know? It's like, you can, you can absolutely beat this boss at, like, level 1, level 2. It's really not that difficult. Um, I typically just go to level 5 because it really doesn't take that long. See, I mean, he, he's dead already. But I guess that's all you can really ask for, for a tutorial boss, you know? It's like, this guy is pretty much here just to teach you the fact that uh, you should heal, you know, you should heal. It's like, as long as you go into that fight, he, like, healed up, even at level 1, you can still quite easily win. Uh, you come to rescue me! I don't know how I can ever thank you. I am Sarah, Princess of Cornelia. Uh, it's the first time anyone's ever defeated Garland. I mean, you guys must have really terrible soldiers then. You must allow me to show my gratitude. Please accompany me to Castle Cornelia. Yeah, sure, no no problem. I, I don't mind doing that. I got you, girl. I got you. Right, so we are now officially back in the, uh, the castle. Thank you for returning my daughter to my side. There can be no doubt that you are the Warriors of Light from Lucahan's Prophecy. Eh... I mean, I might, I might be, I might be. I'm, I'm not saying I am and I'm not saying I'm not. You should hear the prophecy in its entirety, if I may. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. If they cannot gather the shards of light, the darkness will consume all. The four crystals will never shine again. Now I hear that a crystal can be found on the continent to our north. Restoring light to the crystals is our only hope of ridding the world of monsters which plague it. I will have the bridge to the north rebuilt as I promised. I pray that you succeed in restoring light to the four crystals and to the world. Don't worry buddy, I got you. I got you man. It's kind of a shame that that's all he does though, you know, it's like we, we just saved his daughter from, uh, well, who knows what fate. But... It is what he says, you know, it's like he could have he given me something else, but no. Uh, this loot has been entrusted to the Princess of Cornelia for many generations. When he abducted me, Garland took this loot as well. I want you to have it. It may aid you in your journey. Why, thank you. We obtain a loot, guys. We obtain a loot. Okay, so with that, we're actually uh, we're done in the starting area, basically. It's like we can actually leave now. And of course, the... Uh, the castle is way better than any uh, any council in England because they fixed that bridge hella quick. It's like they fixed that bridge in a few seconds, whereas you know, like any problems in uh, in England, like maybe maybe just a little pothole in the road, you know, just a little little pothole, which should only take a few hours to fix, really. While England, you know, it kind of takes like three weeks. So yeah. Just uh, let, let's just be glad they don't take after England, okay? Let, let's just be let's just be glad here. What does this bridge have to do with the prophecy? Well, I need to cross the goddamn continent, you fool! It's like, what do you think it has to do? Like, you can't leave me trapped on this goddamn continent. You can't leave me trapped here, man. The four warriors of light are here. They're here in Cornelia. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, right. So now we just leave the castle. Now, at this point, uh, what you want to do is make sure you buy some healing items, okay? Oh, yeah, there's this little uh, this little cloaked guy as well. You speak to him and he sort of walks off. I'm not going to spoil who that is or what he's for, though, so you're going to have to wait for that. Now, what I suggest doing here is really, really simple. Buy some healing items, especially some antidotes. They're going to come in really, really handy. I'm actually going to buy some potions. Like, I'm actually going to buy quite a lot of potions. Mainly due to the fact that the difficulty in this game, if you know what you're doing, isn't that bad. Uh, but if you get caught out, the difficulty will really start to ramp up, okay? It's like, 
there are some there are some big difficulty curves in this game for sure right with that said though it's now time to leave now one of the things i suggest doing around um you know, just around the castle, is if you aren't already level 5, I suggest actually getting up around that level, because as soon as we cross that bridge, things are going to start getting a bit more difficult, okay? Things are definitely going to start getting a bit more difficult, so you def- oh damn, I did not want to use fire there, actually. Um, but yeah, things are going to get more difficult. Like, the monsters will definitely have a uh, an increase in difficulty. So level 5 is... It's just a little bit of safety, you know? It's just a little bit of safety. So, we're just gonna cross the bridge now anyway. And then we can uh, we can actually start exploring. Oh yeah, and this is like the game's little intro. I forgot this. Because what we've done just is... We've essentially done the game's tutorial, you know? And so, their quest began. I tell you what though, I do love the original FF1 music, man. It's so good. It's like, I love all the OST for FF1. As the four warriors of light, they felt overwhelmed by the great task Destiny had placed before them. I would have preferred if the text moved a little bit faster though, to be honest. Because it is kind of slow. Have you guys noticed though, like the Star Wars feel? You know when Star Wars opening comes up, it's got the music in the background with the scrolling text. You guys notice how similar it is? Like, both in terms of what happens, what's said, and all those, uh, also the music style. Uh, they did not even know the true significance of the four crystals they held in their hands. The crystals that once, long ago, held a light that shone so brilliantly. The time for their journey had come. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. The time to cast off the veil of darkness and bring the world once more into light. You know what? I'm just going to stop reading until all the text is done. It sounds super weird me reading a line, stopping, and then finishing the line. To be fair, though, I don't think there's, uh, I don't think there's any more. Yeah, that's the, that's the last one, it seems. And this is where... This is basically where now we actually gain pretty much complete control now. It's like, in fact, I'll, I'll bring up the, um, I'll bring up the map. So we can't go everywhere right now, um, but we will be able to pretty soon. So if I bring up the map, by the way, um, if you are playing this as well, if you don't know how to bring up the map, it's select and circle at the same time. Which is kind of annoying, I know. So right now, I'm just going to enlarge the map. So we're here right now. Um, we want to go here to Matoya's Cave, first and foremost. Actually, wait, no. Is that Matoya's Cave? One of these is Matoya's Cave, okay? We want to go to one of these. I can't remember which one it is at the top of my head, though. So after this, we're going to go here to this city. This city, we're going to get a boat. And then we'll actually have... Ac Whoops, wrong button again. We'll actually have access to all of this around here as well. That's where things really start to open up, and this is also where things start to get really, really difficult. Because it's like, there was no... There's a lot of, like, really weird curve in FF1. It's like, if you disembark here, and, you know, it's like you go all the way up and around and things like that, you're, you're gonna get wrecked, pretty much. Because it's like, the game doesn't really do a very good job of telling you where you want to go, pretty much. Anyway, though, now that we are on the other side, I'm afraid to say, everybody, that we're going to be ending the video right here. Still, though, I do hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, then please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. If you have played Final Fantasy 1 before, let me know your favorite thing. If you've not played Final Fantasy 1 before, then let me know why. And of course, if you are new to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on the upcoming Final Fantasy Marathon where I play every game in order. As always though everybody, thank you so so much for watching and I will see you soon.